so their system uh, can be localized to a country context. Uh, and the instance that I'm going to utilize for the demo here uh, is uh, set up for uh, the United States. Uh, not that we're using LMMS in the United States for COVID uh, or any other form of programming. Um, it's just a testing instance um, that uh, we also set up uh, to dedicate for these, um, uh, you know, these demos uh, in the launch of the electronic voucher system. Uh, so, you know, can access the system uh, through, um, you know, a desktop browser. You can obviously do so using a mobile device browser as well. Uh, and we have uh, mobile devices, uh, Android mobile devices uh, that we use for uh, data collection. These Android mobile devices, uh, which I'm just going to show you what one of them uh, looks like uh, by pulling the camera. Um, on one, and they decide to slow down when I actually want to do a demo. So uh, that's basically the Android device. It's a little tablet, uh, Nexus, uh, I think it's a Nexus 7, um, what I got here. Um, but mobile phones uh, that, you know, a lot smaller than the tablet that I have here can also be used. And I think it's actually what the field is uh, using uh, for the most part. Um, there's another little uh, device here that we're going to look at in a little bit. Um, the um, uh, the receipt printer uh, that um, you know uses laser technology, uh, and uh, this little guy here will be given to uh, to the merchant. Uh, that uh, a merchant uh, that is selling goods uh, to the beneficiaries uh, can uh, utilize uh, this little unit uh, to print um, receipts uh, to to the beneficiaries uh, as uh, they transact uh, for uh, you know through programs that deliver electronic. Um, uh, vouchers to the beneficiaries. So um, when a program is set up uh, for, uh, for an agency or an office that is using LMMS uh, after, you know, an award has been uh, given, uh, has been signed off, um, transitioning to, uh, to implementation uh, and the beneficiaries have been identified, um, that's when LMMS comes in. Uh, and, you know, um, when it comes in, we basically use, uh, or the field staff will use the system to carry out the registration. So uh, our field staff will log into the system um, using their administrator provided uh, password or password they set for themselves after they log into the system for the first time. We can use the system to collect data at different levels, a complete household registration um, that has, you know, members as well. Um, we individuals uh, where you know a program is targeting individuals and not necessarily households uh, and we can also use it to carry out simplified registration which is uh, common uh, in emergency type setups uh, or emergency programming uh, settings uh, that uh, the field teams don't have uh, the luxury of registering every member in the household they can say you know registering a household uh, of five people um, and uh, if the system, the program is delivering services based on, um, you know, that are uh, computed or calculated based on household size, uh, the system is basically able to use the that, you know, um, household uh, size, uh, which is captured as an explicit number uh, to calculate uh, entitlement. So what we're going to look at is household registration, full household registration. Um, and we're going to register uh, Fiona. Um, in LMMS today. Um, Fiona comes from a community called Fialington. Um, uh, and community here is uh, just, you know, sort of a construct that represents um, the location where the household lives. Um, and registration is often done uh, in, um, you know, uh, gatherings, uh, but it can also be done uh, in, uh, you know, house to house settings uh, where programs actually require that registration is done in that way. There is consent, consent uh, type data here uh, that is, you know, verbal consent at this stage. Uh, and the data or the field officer is uh, expected to uh, post this question, uh, you know, uh, obviously interpreted in local language uh, because it's often um, local staff that are doing registration uh, with their people that they can converse in language that they speak together um, uh, to uh, that, uh, you know, consent has to be granted before data can be collected uh, and uh, used in uh, this, you know, different uh, ways. 
we get address information um, where it is available and the beneficiary is willing to share. It can get GPS coordinates as well. Um, and looks like I got a very thick cloud cover. It was storming significantly here a little while ago, so I'm not able to get GPS. Uh, there you go. Um, and you can mark it as a permanent location of residence. Um, can get conditions as well, um, which is basically household level vulnerabilities. Um, and, you know, we have special judicial needs for the household of uh, uh, Miss Dunn, uh, economically depressed, food insecure, uh, but field staff will basically capture uh, as much as, uh, you know, uh, is the reality um, uh, based on what they gather, uh, you know, during that interview. Then you transition to register the actual uh, household members, um, the gender, um, if the beneficiary doesn't know their date of birth, they tell you they were born when a started tree, uh, you know, a tree started growing somewhere. They estimate that was about 30 years ago. Um, the system will get you an estimated date of birth, um, get relationships, the head of household. Um, initially, it's the first person that is registered, or, you know, if you don't have the head of household uh, standing there in front of you, you can get the other details of the person uh, that has been sent to represent the household in registration um, and, uh, you know, uh, mark the marital status, um, whether the profile is active or not, um, get details associated with government IDs, which uh, the list is localized based on uh, the country where the system is deployed. Uh, if the system has been, if there was a prior registration that was done uh, by another entity that uh, issued an ID card, um, uh, which, uh, you know, we can get access to, um, uh, but not the data itself. We can tie that ID uh, to LMMS so that we don't have to print another ID. Uh, if it has a barcode, we can scan, um, uh, enter, populate the field through scan input. Uh, and, uh, you know, for government IDs, you basically type the government ID there, the same for mobile phone numbers. Uh, this is important when we're delivering um, uh, electronic vouchers through SMS. Uh, and it's also important for the communication that may be uh, utilize, uh, you know, broadcast, broadcast uh, type uh, communication of sending messages to uh, to the beneficiaries. Um, there is a payment account uh, that uh, we can uh, collect uh, digital payment um, data uh, that is, um, uh, just give me a second because I get a lot of uh, feedback. Um, we got, you know, the payment accounts that can be used for digital credits um, or, you know, electronic credits. Uh, if we're using um, uh, a bank to uh, credit beneficiary accounts, delivering cash or using some, um, you know, using a micro financial institution that is delivering payments. If such accounts have been, have been set up, uh, we can collect that account information and we basically set up the payment agency here. So if I take an example of Kenya, uh, which is where I'm from, uh, we'll probably see something like Safaricom there uh, in the payment um, agency, I mean, payment account type or the agency um, uh, type. Actually, that should have been account type. Um, uh, should be uh, something like M-Pesa and then the account number here will be the mobile phone number. So the mobile phone numbers that are captured at the top level here are used for delivering electronic vouchers within, uh, within the LMS electronic voucher solution. Um, member vulnerabilities at the household level, uh, uh, that's basically what you get, protection needs, um, health and medical and displacement needs. Uh, and you hit save uh, and there you go, you have your household. Um, you take a picture as well. Um, sorry, I didn't, I didn't show that. Uh, so let me just edit that very quickly uh, and try to get a picture in uh, for Ms. Dunn. Um, the picture is normally a passport, uh, you know, uh, passport uh, type picture, um, but I don't have, um, uh, just gonna take a random picture there and associate with the profile. Um, already taken the picture, I've actually saved the record. But it's a little slow transitioning because I'm using a USB cord and uh, the data when it's a video or image file uh, is a bit slow in transitioning. But that's the screen where I'm looking at right now. Um, done. Um, I can take that. I can basically take this device to the field, um, use it for, for offline data collection. When I come back to the office, I can hit a button that uh, synchronize uh, this data uh, to go to... Um, uh, to the server that, uh, you know, the device is connected to. 
So once the data goes, uh, I'm going to log in uh, to the server application. Um, and when I log into the server application, uh, well, uh, yeah, it's actually selected to synchronize. So that's taking a little bit of time, uh, but it's no biggie. Um, when I when I log into the server application, I can you know get a little a few summaries there of uh, the number of beneficiaries I have in the system, the number of projects distributions that I've carried out so far. Um, but the next thing that our field uh, guys normally do after they carry out registration is they go in and uh, print the cards uh, of the beneficiaries to sort of complete that. Um, identity loop that, um, you know, you've done a KYC exercise by gathering beneficiary data. Um, and uh, what's the date today? Um, this instance is hosted in a location that's already picking the 23rd. Um, so um, in our session earlier, we registered 2040, uh, we have uh, Fiona there as well. Uh, we can print the card. I'm just going to generate cards. Uh, this is what the cards look like, uh, but we can actually do um, define a different format as well. We can print um, a different type, which is an EMV chip, um, or, you know, takes into consideration the fact that they can be an EMV chip. Uh, uh, because uh, we've done work with MasterCard before uh, using the electronic voucher system before we developed ours. Um, uh, that uh, use, used uh, EMV chips uh, to deliver uh, vouchers uh, instead of, uh, uh, you know, an N NFC because MS uses NFC. Uh, for EMV chips that are also used to deliver cash, um, like, you know, uh, some sort of a credit to a visa uh, type card, um, you can, uh, you know, take that in consideration when you're printing the card. So uh, after the cards have been printed and given to the beneficiaries, uh, our staff uh, will carry out uh, what they call an enrollment exercise. Uh, in the enrollment exercise, um, they will basically uh, um, uh, associate uh, the households with the projects uh, that they're going to receive distribution from. Um, so, so registration is a one-time event. Uh, you gather data for the households. If those households are benefiting, um, you know, uh, from services uh, of uh, uh, say, you know, um, a few different sectors, uh, say shelter, um, wash, uh, education, um, livelihoods, um, they can be associated with those different uh, interventions, basically through an enrollment exercise. So you gather data once, you can utilize that data for different interventions, and you'll be able to uh, report later that, you know, so, given households have benefited uh, from different services, um, yeah, you know, that have been um, uh, delivered by the programs uh, that are implementing those projects, which the beneficiaries are enrolled into. So we're enrolling into Delmas. Um, that's a project that I set up for uh, our tests. Um, you can follow different criteria for enrollment. You can do household level in which you can enroll from a community. If I select Fairlington, it's going to give me everyone that is coming from Fairlington. Those are smart lists. Uh, if I, you know, want to target economic uh, depressed households, um, this is data that we collected uh, during our registration exercise. But there's other data that we can derive. That if you have a project that's targeting just female-headed households, um, there is no flag to say a household is female-headed. The system can do some intelligent logic uh, or examining data in the back end to determine who is, uh, which household is female-headed. Uh, Elderly headed, child headed, based on some uh, you know thresholds uh, for some type you know data types, uh, and obviously just the data that has been captured itself uh, to uh, um, derive the data that you need for enrollment. You can do member level, uh, of which you can also utilize uh, different criteria uh, as you know provided. Um, but for this instance, I'm just going to do households and registered on the 22nd, not 23rd. Speaking the 23rd again because. It's across the mark for where the instance is set up. Uh, and we're just going to get uh, Fiona there. We hit the finish button uh, and it's going to complete enrollment. It's going to try uh, Fiona to our, uh, uh, you know, um, Delmas COVID response project. This Delmas COVID response project is a general distribution uh, type project. 
uh, which is basically, uh, you know, the, fam the, mo the most familiar term is unconditional type uh, interventions. Uh, but, you know, the general distribution is also a term that is commonly used for this type of uh, activities. The system supports uh, general distributions, um, targeted feeding, that's mostly health and nutrition type projects, uh, aid for work. All of these different interventions uh, can deliver electronic vouchers uh, using the module that we just recently uh, finished development for and we're going to look at um, in, a, in a little bit, which is part of uh, what we're going through now. So when our field staff sets set up a project, they get um, you know, their project's number, that's a PBAS number there, um, they, you know, the title of the project, the location where the project is implemented. Some of those, uh, you know, some of this data, like the location is data that you basically obtain from uh, administrative divisions that have been set up in the system. Um, donor who is funding the project, the sectors where the, pro you know, the program is touching, uh, when the project starts and when it ends, uh, and, uh, you know, the context by which the program is set up. Uh, that's basically what we have there. Um, the number of households expect to uh, benefit, and you get a little visual uh, of uh, the number of households that you have enrolled so far. My project only has, you know, a dozen enrollments, five enrollments out of the hundred that we need. So, you know, field staff uh, still have a lot of work to do there. So after the enrollment is done, um, uh, and the project, I mean, the project setup enrollment done, um, the, the service uh, has been defined that we're delivering cash uh, as an electronic voucher going through our EVS channel. Uh, services can go through final distribution points, um, which is mostly in kind. Um, you know, this, when it's going through an FDP, we're going to meet uh, beneficiaries out in the field and do a physical distribution. Uh, and it can also go through an other, you know, a third party agency, uh, sometimes we'll be in subcontracted uh, security agencies to deliver distributions uh, when, you know, security is an issue. Uh, e-payment agencies uh, that we're working with a bank, for example, um, or, you know, microfinance institution to deliver cash. Uh, and uh, that can be calculated, uh, you know, following different uh, sort of schemes. It can be to a household, which is, uh, you know, just sort of um, um, ration size that is targeted to the entire household or based on, um, uh, you know, then the count of members in the household. Um, and after that is set up, Enrollment complete, you get your first report, which is called the master Ben list. Uh, the master beneficiary list gives you a list of uh, the people uh, that are going to benefit from your project. So you get the size, which is the account of the actual people in the household, the location, um, their family name, given name, uh, you know, who the head of the household is. This report looks a lot neater when there's more people, uh, but when, yeah, you know, um, that's it, the, you know, there's this complete household registration that is not just uh, one household. But anyhow, um, that's what it looks like. Um, it can be exported uh, into, uh, you know, in CSV as well. Uh, if there's a need to put this data into uh, other systems that could potentially uh, utilize for more, um, uh, you know, um, um, uh, analytic type activities. Uh, but, you know, it's that stuff that we can do in Power BI as well. So that's probably a feature that's going to disappear uh, with time. Uh, and um, uh, after we have done uh, our registration, we have our list of beneficiaries. Uh, we can go ahead and start planning uh, for distribution uh, for our beneficiaries. Um, uh, so what I did earlier, um, you know, in preps uh, for these sessions, I created a distribution plan uh, for our Delmas uh, project. Um, uh, where is my Delmas project? Uh, anyway, if I don't find my Delmas project, um, I don't have a smart list. I basically have to scroll. Uh, but what I can do is um, can go back to project details here uh, so that I can land into my distribution screen directly. Um, uh, I created a distribution plan that um, serves three households that were initially registered. Um, saying that I have pending updates because I just registered somebody uh, and enrolled into the project, and actually two people, uh, Fauci and Dunn. Um, but I, I'm not going to include them in this plan because I've already, you know, uh, started um, allocating uh, vouchers uh, from my work earlier. Um, and, uh, you know, Dunn, uh, Ms. Dunn and um, Mr. Fauci are going to, or Dr. Fauci, are going to be included in the distribution that I'm going to carry out in, in the future. Um, there are new registrations that are going to benefit in the future. So, you know, that's sort of the business process. So um, after the plan is created, 
um, and approved, there's an approval process that is involved. Uh, that there's a creator um, or there's a maker um, and then there's a checker that it basically approves it was approved earlier the system will allocate vouchers and the voucher allocation uh, goes to uh, to the electronic voucher system our electronic voucher system uh, is um, a separate module that i'm just going to log into um, just now and this electronic voucher system uh, is developed using slightly different technologies uh, that we actually want to update um, uh, these are the code base um, uh, to be, uh, you know, uh, more modern. Um, so there's a different look and feel here. This is um, based off uh, uh, Spring frameworks, um, you know, Angular, um, uh, Postgre, uh, you know, backend, uh, and, um, you know, some neat stuff that we do with uh, Liquibase uh, to uh, automate uh, delivery of, uh, uh, you know, schema change sets, um, so that kind of stuff. Uh, this is based off our type of tapestry and Hibernate frameworks. Uh, and again, you know, we really need to do some work to upgrade, up, update this code base and just, you know, align the UI as well so that uh, it doesn't look like we're dealing with uh, two applications uh, when we're using the system in the field. Uh, so our Delmas projects, uh, if I go to the projects uh, screen there and select uh, Delmas, um, uh, our Delmas project uh, is, uh, you know, uh, delivering services through mobile payments. Um, uh, these are the items that we're delivering, um, you know, gloves, uh, hand sanitizer, hand soap, uh, N95 masks, uh, and there's a merchant that is serving this project. Uh, the merchant name is Rimas uh, Pharmaceutical. Now, when we're delivering electronic uh, vouchers uh, in our programs, uh, our uh, field programs will normally work to identify um, merchants uh, or stores out there. Uh, that are willing uh, to uh, collaborate with us um, by means of, uh, you know, selling uh, goods uh, to the beneficiaries uh, that the beneficiary can basically visit the store uh, and utilize their voucher uh, to sell um, or to buy, uh, you know, uh, the goods from the store. And, um, you know, the, that exchange uh, of uh, the voucher with the goods uh, is directly logged in the system uh, and uh, we can we get that data back in terms of uh, uh, you know the account um, uh, credits um, you know for the merchant and uh, which is basically a debit transaction for uh, for the beneficiary um, so that we know how much uh, transactions that uh, the merchant has accumulated uh, and they can be uh, paid in actual currency uh, for how much they have uh, sold to uh, to the beneficiaries through our electronic voucher system. So um, we, the assumption here is Rimas Pharmaceutical is uh, serving the project Delmas and Rimas Pharmaceutical uh, is uh, setting, uh, selling uh, gloves, hand sanitizer, hand soap, uh, N95. The list will obviously be a lot longer uh, for an actual field program, not the, you know, the dummy setup that I have here for uh, our demo. Um, so, you know, a merchant uh, is given some devices that they use to set up their workstation. Uh, and I'm just going to bring up my uh, merchant application. The merchant uh, utilizes a pin uh, that they set up uh, upon or, you know, um, a device configuration uh, that they can use to log into the system. Uh, so that's uh, the screen uh, that they initially get when they log into the system. Um, they can uh, check to make sure that they have connection to the printer, um, uh, you know, there's some training obviously that is done there. I know that I'm connected to my printer, so I'm not going to go through all that. Uh, but you know, I know tech has um, you know, of disappointing. When you're doing a demo that was connected earlier, then it disconnects when I want to utilize it. Uh, so the merchant will hit start, um, and I'm just going to do this. I'm going to bring up this other device here, the second device, uh, so that I can show you um, how. Um, I, uh, how I can, uh, uh, redeem my voucher, but I'm going to just, uh, just a second. Let me just, uh, kill this all together and bring it back again so that, uh, it can be a bit faster in transition the screens. Uh, um, my tools to slow down a bit. Okay. So that's good. So, um, that's my phone. Um, and my phone is, uh, I'm assuming, you know, uh, that, um, that is going to utilize their phone to, um, redeem vouchers, um, when they visit the merchant. 
and the merchant has uh, the terminal here, this little screen that is uh, moving about here. Um, so what happens is the merchant will uh, select to use mobile payment or a program that uses mobile payment. Uh, a program uh, is uh, assigned a local name that beneficiaries uh, and merchants understand. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, I didn't set up local names for this one, uh, but this is uh, my recent project, Radiwa Delmas, uh, Radiwa Delmas, project of Delmas um, for COVID. Uh, that is, you know, the two uh, words here, Swahili. Um, so select uh, to serve. Uh, I'm going to um, select one hand soap. Uh, that's basically what happens in the field. Um, the merchant can basically, you know, beneficiary can tell the uh, the merchant what they need or the, you know, it's a, a supermarket I set up. They can go ahead and collect them and come and uh, get them entered in the system as they check out, uh, go to card and hit buy. And the system gives you that little screen where you can enter code. So what happens then, uh, the beneficiary uh, will get their mobile uh, device and, um, sorry, I'm trying to, make sure that I show you what I'm doing, um, but it takes a little bit of maneuvering. So we're going to enter this code here uh, to redeem uh, the SMS, I mean to redeem the voucher or to pay for um, this transaction or to process our transaction to one. Uh, it's entered exactly the same format uh, and uh, 559. So the beneficiary can do that themselves. So they send and let's see what happens. Uh, the system will process the voucher. Um, this little uh, pop-up here is unpleasant, but it's not part of the application. It's just my device being uh, not very smart. Um, so the payment is successful uh, and uh, we can select to print a receipt. Uh, that's what the receipt is going to look like. Hit print uh, and there you go. Uh, your printer gets you the receipt. Uh, the merchant can get the receipts out and hand over to uh, to the beneficiary. So that's the SMS voucher delivery. Um, the alternative mechanism for delivering vouchers uh, is um, this little card here. Uh, this um, basically the card that is uh, printed with the details that I demonstrated on the screen earlier. Uh, this is NF has an NFC chip, um, and um, what the beneficiary will do um, is they can they basically bring this uh, close to uh, to the merchant. They can tap it um, without necessarily establishing physical contact. Uh, and uh, this beneficiary is enrolled in two projects. Um, one of them is uh, Bear Creek Livelihoods uh, project. They can select the items that they want to buy um, and go to cut there, uh, hit buy, uh, and you know they will enter a pin number. They have a pin that is assigned to them, and then they tap the card again. Uh, to, uh, you know, complete the transaction. Uh, and uh, the payment is su successful. Uh, and in this instance, you can print uh, the receipt again. Uh, there you go. Um, so that's how we utilize our electronic voucher system, uh, which is uh, really cool because it's a significant milestone for uh, what we do as well. We want to do with World Vision in terms of uh, uh, transitioning to cash electronic vouchers as a dominant form of uh, humanitarian aid, um, obviously, you know, huge replacement for what we do within kind. So after all that is done, uh, the merchant can simply, you know, if they, they're fortunate to have internet, uh, they can hit a button that synchronizes this data uh, to go to the online um, repo uh, or, you know, the portal uh, of which, uh, you know, field staff or, you know, their finance uh, can log into the system and see uh, some of the reports uh, or transactions. Uh, that have been processed, like if I select redeem uh, for transactions that happen today, we'll probably be able to see um, uh, the transactions, the transaction that we just processed. But actually, um, this is going to be the 23rd, um, and I'm not sure I'll be successful in getting that for you. But anyways, that's what happens within the electronic voucher system uh, with LMMS. Uh, there's a lot that this system does uh, when you look at those menus, uh, but I think that's sufficient to introduce you to the electronic voucher system. So I'm um, going to turn